when I looked at it, they reduced it. Redu Hello, everyone. I'd like to call Iberia Parish Council meeting to order. Date August the 12th, 2020. The time is now 6 o'clock p.m. We'll begin with a... Uh, I'd like to remind everyone to please silence their cell phones. We'll begin with opening prayer by Lady Brown and the pledge by Tommy. Everybody rise, please. Almighty Creator, God of the universe, thank you for calling us to serve your people in Iberia Parish. Give us your grace and wisdom and help us not to seek power in our position, but rather make us a vessel to touch the life of your people, especially during a time such as this. Use me and my fellow public servants as a channel of your compassion. Help us to be worthy of your trust, that we may be an instrument of hope during this uncertain time. Give us courage to be agents of change for a better tomorrow for all of your people. Finally, we ask that you heal this nation, state, and parish in all the areas needed. Hear our prayer. Amen. Amen. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Lady. Thank you, Tommy. Roll call. Tommy Palmer. Here. Michael Landry. Here. Brad Davis. Here. Lloyd Brown. Here. Warren Gossestain. Here. Natalie Broussard. Here. Paul Landry. Here. James Trahan. Here. Scott Rossley. Here. Eugene Olivier. Here. Brian Napier. Here. Lady Fartnett Brown. Here. <coughs> Marty Trahan. Here. Ted Montrez. Chad didn't call in. Uh, he, wasn't able to, he wasn't able to make it tonight. We got now go ahead and move into public comment. Need a motion and a second to go into public comment. Move by Tommy, a second by Nally. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And in these, ayes have it, so be. We're now in public comment. Public comment allows for three minutes per person. Number one, comment from the general public on non agenda items. We're going to skip A because our guy Bonnet is on, on a call right now. He's going to come in as soon as he can. We're going to go to B, Mr. Keith E. Thibodeau, to address the council to announce his candidacy for district judge of the 16th <coughs> Judicial District Court Division F. Mr. Keith Thibodeau. Thank you, Mr. Olivier. Thank each and every one of you for uh, taking the opportunity and allowing me to uh, present to you this evening. Uh, hopefully you've heard of me, uh, Keith Thibodeau. I'm running for district judge. Uh, right here in the 16th Judicial District, which is composed of the parishes of Iberia, St. Martin, and St. Mary. And uh, there is a vacancy. We're not trying to replace anyone. <laughs> There's a vacancy. Judge Greg O'Quinn is retiring uh, after many years of service. So therefore, there's the opening. Uh, brief background, I've been happily married to my wife for 37 years, uh, Ms. Bonnie Laparouse. We have four beautiful children, two beautiful grandchildren. Uh, we all live here, work here in the, uh, the district, uh, at least until recently when my son-in-law was laid off in the uh, oil and gas industry. Unfortunately, a sad story for all of us. Which is, uh, by the way, how I started my work career. Uh, my best friend and I decided in our high school year that we had basically two hours left of classwork. So we said, you know, what's, what the heck? Why? Why are we going to school for two hours? Why don't we take correspondence courses? There wasn't any internet, of course, back then, 30 years ago. So in our senior year, we uh, went over to Tesh Area Vocational Technical School, and we each obtained our electrician certificate, and I began working what we thought was going to be very lucrative. Two young men basically ready to make some tons of money in the oil field. <laughs> well, we did for a little while, but not long. The bottom fell out of the oil and gas industry, and uh, my wife and I were still dating at the time. I said, you know what? I've always wanted to be a state trooper. She said, well, that might be a problem. She said, I don't want the call at midnight that uh, leaves me a widow with children. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll see how we'll venture into <coughs> other territories. But that was always in the back of my mind. Always I wanted to be a Louisiana state trooper. And so at that time, again, with the oil field having collapsed, I said, well, let's go over to USL. Yep. 
University of Southwestern Louisiana back then. And we obtained a business degree. Fortunately, I was able to come back right here in Iberia Parish, work for DeLome Industries and for the Iberia Parish School Board, uh, purchasing agent and accountant. Uh, unfortunately, all feel got me again. DeLome Industries was basically uh, suffering, unfortunately, at the time. So I said, <coughs> well, Bonnie and I were married at the time. I had no children. I said, guess what? Still calling me. Let's do that legal career somewhere. So I said, let's go to law school. LSU Law School, uh, fortunately graduated there and was able to work for a very intelligent, very kind man, Judge Robert Fleming. I uh, worked for him as a clerk uh, over in Franklin, St. Mary Parish, worked for him for a year. And due to his wisdom, at the end of my one year clerkship, he said, hey, Keith, you can stay here with us or heck, I've got an attorney over in St. Martinville, your neck of the woods, you might want to consider. I said, who's that, Judge? He said, Bert Willis. Hmm. I said, Mr. Burt's pretty young. Why would he want a young guy? He said, Burt's a lot older than you think. He, you might have an inroad. <laughs> so sure enough, I went to work for Burt. And back there, just like most attorneys, he was a general practitioner. He did everything <coughs> from A to Z, criminal litigation, civil litigation, family law, you name it. And we fortunately are here 30 years, fast forward 30 years later. Uh, what I began with, Mr. Burt, is what I do each and every day, both uh, in and out of the courtroom. Fortunately, we've been able to do for our people over the past 30 years, not only, of course, again, domestic family law work, business work, we do uh, estate or succession work. Uh, we've been very fortunate through the years to do a lot of public agency work. Uh, I serve as the attorney for the uh, St. Martin Parish Clerk of Court, also the St. Martin Parish Assessor's Office, and we're also counsel for the water districts there. Uh, in St. Martin Parish, which, as you know, sometimes gets very interesting. Uh, we were very successful. The last project, big project, that we took on was the expansion of the K project, uh, which today is still expanding, and we need more capacity in terms of water <coughs> service. Uh, I'd like to take that 30 years of experience and put that to work on the other side. That, was, that is on the bench side. Uh, I've worked for my clients very diligently. We've served them with a uh, good character, I want to be able to do that. I want to continue to do that, uh, hopefully for the people of this district, that is the 16th Judicial District. Uh, I I've learned one thing for certain, a judge can make a decision which will affect not only you, the litigant, but further, your family, community can be affected. And I just plan on using, again, my past 30 years of diligent court work to go on and continue to work, hopefully here, as your district judge, the people's judge. Uh, I've never held political office before. Uh, I don't plan, I don't, I can say emphatically, I'm not going to use the position of judge. I've been asked that question before, uh, to move on from there in other political endeavors. No, no, I do not. I wanna be your judge. I wanna put my experience, hard work, dedication, character to work for all of you, the people of the 16th Judicial District Court. <coughs> So again, if you can consider this come November 3rd, uh, the big election day, of course, for everyone, uh, if you can consider and support us, we certainly appreciate it. And again, thank you all, BMSC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Thibodeau. Thank you. Moving on to see Mr. Bo Dewey to address <coughs> the council to announce his candidacy for the district attorney of the 16th Judicial District. Bo? Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate the opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to be here in front of you. And uh, just very briefly, although I, I know uh, all of you personally, uh, for the purposes of people who may be watching, my name is Bo Dewey. I'm the district attorney. I'm your district attorney. Uh, born and raised here in the 16th Judicial District, specifically Iberia Parish in Olivier. Uh, graduated high school, Catholic high school here in 1980. Graduated from USL. <laughs> Uh, 1984, with a business degree, worked in banking until 1989, went back to Tulane University Law School for a law degree, thinking I was going to get back in banking law, came out, began clerking for Judge Fleming. Yep. There you go. Great, great judge. And, uh, and during the 11th month of that clerkship, uh, Bernie Boudreaux, who was the district attorney at the time, said, hey, Bo, do you want to be a prosecutor? And I said, sure, I, I think I would like to try that. And therein started my career in 1993. <coughs> I've been in that office as an assistant district attorney from 1993 
until I was uh, acquired the position of district attorney in 2015, uh, fortunately at that point without any opposition, and have been your elected district attorney since that time. Uh, often people say, well, what do you do? I ask people would, when I get to meetings, what do you think I do? And they say, well, you put people in jail. Well, I always tell them to hold that thought because the reality is, is yes, yes, we do. And uh, that's often associated with violent criminals, uh, sex offenders, uh, repeat offenders who don't take advantage of opportunities along the way to deal with whatever issues have led them to that position. But that's a small part of what we do. Uh, what we do also <coughs> is we represent public bodies throughout the three parishes, and you all know that very well. I'm fortunate to have Mr. Sheely here. Andy is a really valuable part of the team. I have three full-time assistant district attorneys who represent public bodies across the three parish districts of St. Martin, Iberia, and St. Mary, which I represent. So that's another obvious constitutionally mandated duty that I do. But we do so much more. Uh, during the term that I've been here since, since 1993 and through my district attorney years from 2015, uh, we continue to support and get innovative in how we address with the issues that are faced in the criminal justice system, which is trying to get people to avoid that system. That is very important. It's important to keep an open mind and try to see how we can deal with that. A lot of times I tell people um, a lot of what we do is deal with good people who make poor choices. And how do you deal with that? We've all been in situations during our upbringing and <coughs> raising children where they make poor choices. And it's just not a very straightforward answer that, oh, well, they did this fact that fits that crime. We're going to go ahead and prosecute them. No, you got to look at the underlying situations in each individual case and try to make a decision of what is the right thing to do. Uh, a lot of times it deals with drugs. We were the very first drug court ever to open in the state of Louisiana. It was modeled out of a Florida drug court program. It occurred by Judge Hunter started it in 1997, I believe, and we've, we've had that program ever since, and it's been a very successful. It's not a perfect program, but it's a successful program. It's a way to take people that have an addiction issues with alcohol and drugs and put them onto a path of recovery where if you cure that disease, if you cure that issue, you end up curing that, quote, criminal, and they become another law-abiding paying contributing citizen so that's one thing we do we also have a lot of mental health issues with which those of you who are in the in the system and, and or lawyers understand that that's a huge issue that has very limited resources now that need to be expanded so we look at that as an innovative way to change we also have a pretrial diversion program and what we do is on the front end we take uh, offenders on nonviolent crimes and we look at them and say listen let, let's basically have a probationary period on the front end. If you have alcohol issues, drug issues, let's try to deal with them. Uh, we make people do their community service, pay restitution, whatever the situation is, and try to get them on the front end to have a certain level of accountability and a certain time to prove themselves worthy of a second chance. And then if they successfully complete that, we don't file that bill of information. We set them on their way and hope that they never return to this system in that manner again. Uh, that's a different, that's another way we, where we've been innovative. Uh, other things we do is we have a very, very, during this process, strong victims assistance program. You know, there's a victims uh, mandated constitutional rights that were implemented. And uh, part of that was to have victims assistance coordinators in each office. And we have a victims assistance coordinator in each of our parishes. They're very instrumental to be responsive to victims and their needs. Uh, from the time uh, ours specifically in Iberia Parish is Catalina Terrio. She goes out and responds as soon as we get information <coughs> that there's been some tragic or violent offense or homicide. At that moment, she reaches out to the family. We begin that process to work them through that grief period and on the way to, some, to that, a level of justice that is appropriate in that circumstance. And then finally, uh, one thing we do is a, is a family services division. And our prosecutors' uh, early intervention program, with if there are any school teachers that are listening or are present, you know what we're talking about. That's the ability to identify young at-risk children through the school system and find out what is the problem because they're seeing signs 
of, of children who are, who are not properly nourished, uh, not properly uh, uh, groomed, falling asleep, having learning problems. And what you generally find in that, you find in there is a family that's struggling, generally a single parent family that's struggling. And so we have a team of people who go out into the community and into those situations and assess and give the services that needs to be there, whether it's, you know, uh, getting them back for the, maybe a parent has a drug issue, the children have some other issues that we have to deal with, a lot of them dealing with post-traumatic stress situations. And what we're trying to do is break a cycle, break a cycle where people are coming into the criminal justice system. That is our goal. That is our objective is basically to work myself out of a job because if there's no crime then I go home now is that ever going to happen probably not but are we going to try to do that we absolutely will so I thank you for this opportunity <coughs> I appreciate this opportunity to not only be in front of you but in front of the audience that is watching and I ask everybody here for for the sport in me is my re-election as district attorney I will continue to be innovative. I will continue to be open to change for the betterment of my office and the betterment of this community. Thank you. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, Bo. <clears throat> we'll go back to A, uh, in public comment, uh, Fire Chief Guy Bonin, Liberty Parish Fire Protection District Number 1, to address the council regarding the fire protection millage renewal <coughs> on August the 15th election ballot. God. Good afternoon, and I apologize for running late, but when duty calls, it calls. Um, we have our election for our millage is set for um, Saturday, and all I can ask is that each one of y'all, as you go about your day tomorrow and uh, Friday and Saturday, that just to remind your constituents to go out and vote. Um, it's something that is seen. Um, People get a instant, um, hopefully most of the time, a positive thing from us when we're out. It's not always like that. We're not always that fortunate, but that's the direction that we strive. Um, we've been working for 30 years with this district to keep building it. And the direction we're going right now is a positive one, and that's what this millage does. It takes care of all of our volunteer departments, takes care of our career staff, takes care of our stations and equipment. I really don't have a whole bunch to say other than just ask you people to go out and vote. And I know we got some uh, new council members that haven't been able to get up here, just do everything going on. And I would definitely answer any questions you have now, or if you want to call me later, you can do that. It's totally up to y'all. Yeah, Guy, uh, before you, I just want to comment, you know, the fire district has been doing such a fantastic job in Iberia Parish. A lot of times y'all the first respond on the accident scene immediately taking care of those people that's been injured and I want to congratulate you all on that and the renewal of this mill is going to continue that process of y'all giving life-saving uh, uh, assistance to people you know in accidents as well as any fire conditions or any conditions y'all can go out and take care of yes, thank sir. you Brian guy I want yes, to sir. echo that I mean I mean we are fortunate to have a, um, a, a, a department like uh, like we have <coughs> the question I have is, uh, is there anything else on the ballot, or is it just that? I, I haven't really. Right now, this is the only thing that was on the ballot. Now, we were actually back in July. We just made all of our signs the week after that they moved us and canceled the election in July. So it was supposed to be in July. It was supposed to be in July. So we had to get all of our signs redone. So it's, um, and I'm making that point because Surely it's, it'll be easy for people to just forget about yes, sir. Uh, just that on the ballot and not some major judge or DA or president or whatever being at or well, by itself. So yeah, we all need to go out and make sure that uh, we get a lot of people out to go vote and support this. It's, it's, it's essential that we get this passed. I, I agree. I mean, we putting putting signs. I've been getting into business, just talking to people. Uh, we can't go door to door so much because. No. We do get into people's houses, but that's not the time for us to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but thank you for what you're doing. Good luck. Um, hopefully it'll pass on Saturday. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman. Oh, hold on, Larry. Uh, uh, James. This is just a renewal. It's not a new tax. Just yes, sir. People can understand it's not anything new 
nothing new, and it's been in place for over 20 years. And if for some reason this wouldn't pass, we would see a tremendous increase in our uh, insurance for fire on homes, right? Yes, sir, because so. we would have to do a drastic layoff <clears throat> right. and try to reconfigure this and try right. to put it to another boat. Yeah. Rates are going through the roof probably. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. So we need to try to get this passed so we can pay a little bit to y'all and not a lot to the insurance companies. I agree, 100%. Thank you, guys. All right. Hey, James, if you don't mind speaking your mic, that way uh, the people on the speak up here can hear. <coughs> Done? Okay. Finish. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank uh, you. All. Larry has a quick guy. Wait, Larry has a question. Oh, Larry? Sorry. Have a comment? Hey, Guy, I just want to tell, I just want to tell Guy, thank you for everything that, he, that he's doing in Iberia Parish. Guy is, a, of course, the fire chief, but Guy does so much more. Anytime there's any type of emergency, and, and in fact, it don't even have to be an emergency. When I need help in any area in Iberia Parish government, Guy is the go-to person a whole lot. And, and, and Guy, I just want to tell you publicly that I appreciate everything that you do for Iberia Parish. I appreciate what you do for Iberia Parish as the fire chief, but I appreciate what you do for Iberia Parish government. You're always there when I call, and I just want to say this publicly so people can know what, you know, the impact that you have and your department have in Iberia Parish. Appreciate it. Thank you, Larry. Any other questions? Thank you, Guy. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. We do have one written in. Uh, uh, a written in a statement that's going to be read by uh, Brenda from Mr. Corey David Hart, PhD. Uh, Brenda, can you go ahead and read it in for the record? Public comment. Okay, one minute. That's not the committee, Eugene? No, this is a. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's on the committee agenda. Okay, this is a um, comment form from Mr. Uh, Corey David Potar, Potar from uh, New Iberia. It was for informational purposes. His statement says the residents of Alley Boo Drive put their trash cans for Tuesday pickup at the corner of Frenchy Street and Alley Boo Drive. Since 2017, I have noticed that there are times when not all the trash is taken out of the can and or piles of trash are left on the ground after pickup. I called Waste Connections about this in the past and they have stated before it was because trash needed to be in bags, that is not loose in the trash can. Bren My Brenda, Bren Brenda, can you hold a minute? I, I apologize, Brenda. Yeah. Yes, right? that is yeah. committee. Uh, Warren is correct. This goes on committee. Uh, can can oh, you okay. ahead, hold off until committee on this one? Sure. Okay, I missed that one. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. Okay, uh, thanks. For reminding me about that. Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, number two, comments from the general public on agenda items. Person being considered for appointments to parish boards and commission to address the council. Is anyone here applying for boards and commission would like to address the council? Marty? <laughs> No, we have uh, Mr. Mr. Raywood Segura. He never sent in a comment, written comment. We have uh, uh, Rory Romero. Um, of course, he, he addressed us at one of the last uh, meetings. By letter. By letter, right. And the Katie in the Fairground, David Romero. Uh, we still haven't heard from him yet. Mr. Raywood went under chemo treatment, and he said he was going to send a letter. Okay, yeah, uh, I think Nicole contacted everyone. No one said anything <coughs> comments. Okay, well, uh, we'll go ahead and discuss this a little more in the uh, in the regular regular session. Thank you. Mr. Eugene, Mr. Romero is present. Mr. Romero, are you here? Yes, okay, sir. Okay, I apologize. All right. Go ahead. Uh, your name and uh, what your uh, position you're applying for. Uh, my name is Dave Romero, and um, I am asking to be uh looked upon for the um the seat at acadiana fairgrounds commission uh there's a few that has asked me to uh, be a part of this organization to better help and foresee the the fairgrounds and the events and whatnot okay thank you for your consideration yes sir thank you okay, thank you 
Anyone else uh, applying for board and commission would like to address the council? Move to close public comments. I have a motion by Nellie to close public comment and second by Warren. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Ayes have it. So be. more time. <clears throat> okay, reports, finance, and administrative actions. One, budget sheet for June the 2020 uh, on request. Two, budget <coughs> report for June 2020 on request. Reports, parish and other governmental agencies. Monthly billing report dated July 2020 was in your package. Public works report, there is none. <coughs> Special business, there is none. Council member announcements. Anyone from the council would like to make an announcement? Paul? Um, just to let uh, a lot of us know <coughs> that uh, we've been wanting a list of the uh, properties in the parish, and Nicole's working with the assessor and with uh, Donna with the in, in, uh, human resources, I guess, and uh, piling it. Like we had met one time before, a couple of us, and it's hard to know what the properties are by some of the listings. So she's going to give us a description that this property is. 2509 Highway 268B is just a piece of property, or it's the Lydia Veterans Building, or whatever it is, so that uh, you know we can look at some of it that we may want to. But that project is moving along, and uh, we should have it in a week or two. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Okay, if not, we're moving on to a parish president announcement. Mr. Richard. Okay, uh, Eugene Chairman. I want to start off by, um, by just uh, pass on to the Parish Council that Eugene Olivia was appointed uh, to the Transportation Steering Committee uh, Subcommittee as Vice Chair for NACO. I received a letter from the NACO President uh, stating that he's also a member of the Membership Stand uh, Standing Committee and the Resilient Counties Advisory Board. Eugene, I want to, I want to thank you very much for um, the amount of work that you're doing with NACO in four, four years, four and a half years, you, um, you've made quite an impact um, with NACO. And I just want to tell you on behalf of Liberia Parish, uh, I appreciate that, all the work that you do uh, to try to help in, in government. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, public works. For the last two weeks, uh, public works who have done COVID cleaning in District 2, 5, 9, 10, 13, and 14. We did inspections of culverts in District 10. We picked up debris in various districts. We had some trees down in District 10, 11, and 13 that we had to get up. We did some field drainage work in District 3 and 11, roadside drainage work in District 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, and 14. We did some uh, road grading work in District 9, 10, 12 and 14. We had some limestone work that we had to get done in District 13. We took care of that. We had road crossing work that needed to be done in District 9 and 13 and 14. Uh, we did road patching in every district except for District 1 and 4. Every other district in the parish, we had to do some road patching. And that's, um, as you know, that's, that's quite an endeavor right now. We did some road repair work uh, in District 9 and 10. Uh, we had some uh, front ditch uh, side building work we did in various districts. We had some trees down, so, or shall I say we had to trim trees in District 6, uh, 13, and 14. The other thing I want to pass on is tomorrow, uh, on Friday we're going to be doing some testing at Ward 8 um, for COVID. And we had testing done today in Lowerville Park. And the next one is going to be on Friday at Ward 8. That's going to be from 8 o'clock in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, as of right now, AIC, uh, they're doing some upgrade on our video technology. Uh, you might remember when we did the contract with them, uh, they were supposed to come back whenever we have technology changes that's taking place. So right now they're doing exactly that. They're changing out uh, recording system and video management, uh, you know, and cameras and things of that, of that nature. All of that is taking place as we, as we speak right now. In um, Robert B. Green, uh, the Robert B. Green Veterans Memorial Building renovation is going on. I went there today, and they're really moving ahead. They're moving along with that um, pretty good. I'm continuing to do our regional calls on, on Mondays and Thursdays with um, 
for Region 4 with all the parish presidents and mayors and the governor's office and uh, go south and Department of Health and Hospital, and you guys are totally aware of that, but we're continuing to do that every Monday and Thursday, and we're getting a lot of information from that. On tomorrow, uh, Life Brief Support Ministry, uh, they volunteer, and they're going to be uh, distributing milk. Uh, that's going to take place starting at 1 o'clock tomorrow in the parking lot behind the courthouse. Uh, the Emergency Preparedness and 911 Communications Building, you should have that on the agenda tonight uh, for substantial completion. We're moving along with that building very, very well. That's going very well. The uh, Kate Anna uh, Regional Act, uh, Airport Access Road, the contract has been executed uh, for construction, and that should start within the next 30 days. And um, I think that's all I'm going to report tonight. We have a lot that's taking place in Paris government, as you know. And again, since we have this COVID thing and we're not, you know, seeing each other as much as we normally do. Any one of you that has anything that you want to talk to me about, please just call me. All of you have my cell number, and I'm not a hard to get a hold of. So call me if you have anything at all you want to talk about. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any, <coughs> any questions for Larry? Okay. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate the report. You're welcome, sir. We're going to be moving on to the consent agenda items for public hearing and adoption. Minutes, regular meeting of July. 22nd, 2020. Need a motion in the second. Moved by uh, Brian. Second. Move second by Warren. All those in favor signify by saying so, aye. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, it's a consent agenda. Let's go ahead and move on. Summary number 107 introduced by the Paris uh, President. A resolution granting substantial completion to the New Iberia 911 facility project, all as completed by MD. Uh, this Descant LLC and as recommended by project architect Gasaway Gasaway Bankston. Uh, summary number 108 introduced by the parish president a resolution of condolence to the family of Mr. James Lamar Anderson Jr., formerly Homeland Security E911 director who passed away on August the 4th, 2020. Summary number 109 introduced by the legal counsel. A resolution authorizing the Iberia Parish President to execute a carpet endeavor agreement by and between Iberia Parish Government and Seward District Number One of Iberia Parish, Louisiana, related to the Estes Road Paul Segura Parkway Sewer Extension across U.S. Highway 90 Project, uh, FPNC Project Number 50-J23-18-02. To provide for effective date thereof and to otherwise provide with respect thereto. Does anyone like Mr. to remove Chairman. any agenda items? Brian? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to pull uh, 107, please. Okay. Also on the request, Mr. Chairman, summary 109. Okay. Damn. Max the forward the rest of them without objection. Okay. I need a motion to uh, for the other two items to we be already we, we already. Moved okay, in. I got a motion by Brian and a second by Warren. Yes, All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Ayes have it, so be. Uh, we'll leave it right there. Okay, now, we, now we're going to go to uh, summary number 107, introduced by the parish president. Uh, Brian? Okay. So, um, Press. Here. So, Press, before I, I didn't know <coughs> if, if, uh, if you wanted to address some of the, uh, let me just make a little statement. So, I, when I looked at it uh, and I saw list after list after list of um, that punch list, it, uh, I, I was a little bit disturbed about it. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie about it. Uh, that's a long list and from what I've heard, uh, is that two or three times that y'all been with the contractor that that so I well, before I go too far I don't know if you wanted to address the punch list yeah but I, I think the punch list that and I'm I would have probably provided one that shows the work that's been done the initial list that was in your information was two months old it's dated uh, Eugene, I press June 12th to the mic. it's dated uh, okay. June 12th it's uh, probably several hundred items and uh, that was based on all the various engineers, the electrical engineer, the mechanical engineer. And I think it's worth pointing out, we uh, hired a third party 
I guess, construction engineer to oversee the construction of the building from the beginning. And they contributed to the punch list. In the last two months, that list has been whittled down. Uh, I got an update yesterday. Subject to the architect's agreement, it's down to about between 10 and 15 items, uh, cosmetic items. 10 and 15. Oh, 15. One five. All right. uh, things like a front door that sticks. Um, some baseboard <coughs> that's separated from the wall. Uh, so n nothing that would interfere with our ability to use the building for its intended purpose. We've, we're currently withholding 85, over $85,000 from the builder for 100% uh, completion of the punch list. Um, that's in addition to, I think we've got about $250,000 withheld for retainage. So with some other payments not yet made, the Builder is still owed about three hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, and so I would just tell you that uh, the the punch list again has been whittled down to pretty much cosmetic items, grass, redoing the grass. They had to regrade uh, the grass to make sure it drained correctly. We saw after some rains it wasn't draining correctly. That was all done, in fact, uh, Monday. Um, so uh, again, I. I, I'm going to defer to my architect that they have corrected those things um, in the correct way. Uh, but most of the things I'm talking about have been done and checked already. Do, do you have a list? Yes. Uh, an updated list of what's not done? On yes. The punch list? It's the same list that you received. I had the, uh, uh, the clerk provide oh. that to you today. Again, I apologize. Oh. I don't realize how you got the, the empty list that makes it look like it's two months ago. Uh, you should have one. It, it'll show you the. Uh, so let me ask. But I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. But uh, is it? What, what you think the value uh, dollar to that list is? The value, the value that the value of the list was eighty-five thousand dollars. We're withholding all of it. I'd say about ninety-five percent of that has been corrected. So if I, if I understand right, it, you're asking to pay the three whatever, you're going to hold 85 and there's still two, uh, 200 plus on retainings that he'll get at, at when, when that is due. Am, am I correct? Well, no, he will not be paid the retainage for, I think, another 45 days. Right. No, he'll no, not, I understand that. He'll not be right. paid the $85,000 until the punch list is 100% complete. And then I think there's another thirty or $40,000 he has not billed us for yet, and that would add up to $350,000. So, what is the dollar amount for tonight that we are, that we are proving? Uh, either no, I would say none. Potentially, he could bill us for thirty thousand. What the architect told me he plans to do, he doesn't plan on making uh, recommending any more payments Payment. okay. uh, until the punch list is complete. So, essentially, we're withholding about one hundred and ten thousand dollars for this punch list. That's Nearly complete. Nearly complete. So you feel good. Uh, the only thing, and the reason I'm questioning that is, is that we've been caught before, and um, uh, I, I don't want to see this happen to the taxpayers again. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely comfortable, and in going into this, I didn't appreciate the significance of doing it, but hiring a third-party engineer. Oh, I think that was a good idea. Uh, stuff I never would have known. He was right. like looking at where the concrete came out of the cement mixer and. Stuff and I look, had no. Those, those pictures really told a story. Mm -hmm. You know, when 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 I got it and we talked to a couple councilmen, it was it was it was disturbing a little bit. But if they corrected all that yes. to the engineers' satisfaction, um, that's good. It will be corrected. It ha either has <coughs> already been corrected, and those ten or fifteen remaining items will not be cleared until the architect and our engineer have okay. signed off on it. Okay. Um, I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Press. Thank you, sir. Uh, James. Hey, Press. Yes, sir. Uh, so you, you're comfortable with everything so far that you've seen at these fix. I went past there yesterday and kind of walked around, and the uh, place is pretty impressive, uh, the state of the art. Uh, I looked around, and y'all you know, have a nice building there. Uh, did, did I see somewhere that y'all had a, at one time had a window leaking or something around a seal or something? There is a leak. There's a, a vestibule in front. So there's really nothing. It's just it's to provide a, a vestibule. So in a storm, you come in through one door, you're in a glassed-in vestibule before you enter the building. It's that vestibule that doesn't have anything in it. That's where the leak is. They recalked. They, dis, they took the framing off, recalked the windows Monday. They have to wait 72 hours. And I think they're going to use a pressure washer to test it for leaking again. 
Yeah, I've seen yesterday they was doing uh, putting down tile right there, a uh, fresh tile or putting down a the tile there. So there's no wall right there that, that I see <coughs> that you can have moisture in a wall. No, wall. It, the, the structure of that particular one, it's all glass. It's actually Lexan for strength, but it's essentially glass, metal, and vinyl tile in that room. Okay. And I see you had one room uh, that had uh, air, air distribution problems possibly. Was, was the air balance done yet? I, I'd have to defer to my mechanical engineer. I know it was, I think I remember that one, and that has been corrected. Okay. I can tell you that was corrected. I can't explain it, but I was told by the uh, mechanical engineer that the builder had corrected it. Okay. So uh, once the punch list gets completed and everything's done, you okay with it, then that's when they get the rest of that money, correct? They get the money we've withheld for the punch list. I'm the wrong guy to explain how retainage works, but they will get the punch list money once the punch list has, items have been completed and checked. The retainage, I think, is a separate payment, right, Andy? Okay. Uh, the retainage would be paid to them 45 days after they finished all of those items. And that 45 days, of course, is your lien period for any liens or encumbrances that might be filed during that period. So you really got a couple of pots of money. You got your, you got your money for the repairs. You got your money for the retainage. That adds up to about three hundred and fifty dollars. And when they finish the punch list items, they'll get that money, but they still have to wait forty-five days till after all the lien periods have expired before they get their retainage. Okay, so they have forty-five days after everything's completed to get their money. So we make sure that everything's completed on that list before we go into forty-five days. Okay. Oh yes, sir. We're not. <coughs> we're not forgiving anything. Okay, that's what I want to make sure. Because, like Brian said, we've got caught with other projects in the past, and those, those days are going for our very parish. I have a tax payer paid twice for something. Amen, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Uh, Warren. Uh, Press, uh, just a quick question. Have, has your department started? going and in, started moving into that building yet in any areas we've started moving our furniture in there okay. but we're not our understanding is we cannot move until the parish formally takes substantial completion okay so let's say that happens and my question is about what amount would be left here of your department in the courthouse zero it'll be a two-phased move really in the courthouse is myself deborah connor and norma Aber. Um, once you all grant substantial approval and mr richard signs off on it the three of us will move over. Um, then the balance of my move will be the 911 operation, which is my supervisor, systems administrator, and the 911 call takers. They will move, they'll do training next week. We have IT contractors now from about four firms over there installing the various new IT systems we're gonna have for IT uh, 911. And our, our plan, and we're looking good right now for this, uh, Six in the morning on September 1st, we're going to cut over the 911 calls, and at that point, all the 911 people will be reporting to work in the new building. Perfect. Good. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Paul, um, Prescott, <coughs> could you get with the uh, with the clerks and uh, maybe pick a couple days where uh, the council here could tour the facility? Yes, sir. At your convenience, you know. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other comments? James, yeah. I'd like to uh, just thank you all for what you all do for the parish and in the emergency times. Whenever things are really you know, in turmoil, you all come through and do a, a wonderful job. And I want to thank you all. Well, I'll tell my folks. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Press. Appreciate it. Uh, since we pulled it out of the uh, consent agenda item, I didn't get a motion in a second to uh, move sorry. this I'll, forward. I'll move. I moved by uh, Warren. Second. Second by Natalie. Yes. We have discussion. Any discussion? Wave. 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 Okay, roll call. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Ayes have it. So be. Thank you. <clears throat> summary, one, summary number 109. Need a motion in the second. So moved. Moved by Warren. I need second. a second by uh, second. Brian. Discussion? Warren? You don't? Okay. Uh, Andy, if you, you kind of wanted to, I know there were some questions about it. If you wanted to kind of explain it at first, what, what exactly we're going right here with the cooperative? Never agreement with the uh, par with the sewer district. I think we had touched on it somewhat in committee yeah. when we're talking about the three phase file. No. I, I can touch on it. First of all, in generality, he talked about the expansion sewer lines. Yeah. 
underneath Highway 90. That's where we had started last week. That, that, and, and that's what this particular project is about, extending from Paul Segura Parkway, Estes Road, uh, under 90 to be able to get on that side of the road and be able to expand in the future. Not just for the sewer district, many times the parish applies for uh, funds from uh, LCDBG, from uh, uh, capital outlay that are applied for by parish government, but they benefit a particular board or commission. This is one in which there's uh, <coughs> capital outlay funds that have been dedicated for this particular project. So, so what we want to make sure is that when you go to the pr trouble of gaining funds to help a board or commission, and you finish the project that that board of commission is going to take that project on because you really did it for them. And so this cooperative endeavor agreement basically says at the completion of this project and substantial completion that the sewer district will take over the operations of that extension. Or is there? Had something Good. Any other comments from council? Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Eyes have it, so be <coughs> motion carries. Thank you. And moving on to our ordinance introduced for public hearing and adoption. There is none. Resolution introduced for public hearing and adoptions. Summary number 101 introduced by the clerk of the council. A resolution appointing Mr. Raywood Segura to the Iberia Veteran Memorial Building Board for a remaining of a five year term to fill the vacancy created. Uh, by the expiration of the term of Mr. Raywood Segura, whose term expired June the 2nd, 2020. So moved. Note, table from the July 22nd, 2020 IPC meeting. Moved by Warren, be the second by Scott. Uh, Warren. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if, 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 if you will, I, I'd like to table it without putting the date on it until the clerk gets a definite answer from these board members. It does cost us in publication to continue to put these on there. So once they get the full, I guess, him coming here or maybe a response, they can go ahead and pull it from uh, the table and put it on here. Okay, thank you, Warren. Uh, uh, Marty? We will have a response by next meeting. Or I will go to his house tomorrow okay. and pick up the letter. Okay, All right, then. thank you. No problem, I'll go to move it forward. I got a motion by Warren to table. Table to the next meeting. Okay, Scott, second. second table. That's enough. All those in favor of Sikha by saying aye. Aye. Any nays, ayes have it, so be. Motion table. To the so, next meeting, correct? Off the table, right? Well, no, if he said he can get him, that means. Okay. You want to That's fine. It, it, he still can pull it. You want to That's good. Next I'm, meeting? I'm fine with that. You good? good? Okay. okay. Next meeting, Brenda. Okay. Okay, uh, summary number 106 introduced by the clerk of the council, a resolution appointing Mr. Dave Romero to the Acadiana <coughs> Fairgrounds Commission for the remaining of a five-year term to be to fill the vacancy created by the expiration of term for Mr. Chad Broussard, whose term expired June the 2nd, 2020. Note, table from the July 22nd, 2020 Liberia Parish Council meeting. Moved by uh, Natalie, second by Michael. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays, ayes have it, so be. Uh, motion carried. <coughs> Mr. Uh, Romero, congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Summary number 110, introduced by Paul Landry, District 7, a resolution amending the 2020 Economic Development Fund budget in the amount of $30,000 to repair a sewer line issue on the SS Paul. Estes Road Paul Segura Parkway Sewer Project, all to be funded by the contract payment ARA Access Road line item. Move. Motion by Paul. Second. Second by Natalie. A discussion? Paul? <coughs> I think we went through pretty much of it, but I'd be available to answer anything if anybody has questions. Okay. Uh, Brian, you have a comment? So, Paul, if you would, I know we talked about it in committee, but for the general public, <coughs> would you kind of touch on? Why and why are we having to pay that? Why you're asking for us to pay that thirty thousand? Well, um, I was at the uh, sewer board meeting, the last one they had, and uh, they're ready to go ahead and turn the switch on that uh, Estes Road project and you know start using it. But then it came up that there was a couple, uh, an add a phase, and a couple uh, uh, 
lift stations, the inside needed to be recoded and things like that. So quickly, just kind of hearing, you know, what the cost was, we bumped it up a little bit to 30,000 uh, so that <coughs> we turn the system on and then we have all these issues uh, coming later down the road. So this is a project, uh, as we all know, parish government usually uh, makes these projects. And with all the issues we had and everything, I don't think it was fair to the sewer department or to their customers that, you know, they come out and, uh, you know, have to later on come out and pay for it. So uh, since we have the TIF district, this is what it's for. I think it, uh, and it's benefiting the TIF district. I think that's why we should pull it from the EDD fund balance. Right. So the line item ERA project. Right. Just, uh, just to make another point, Paul, um, is that this is something that should have been done when this when this project was done. I, I just want to lay all that out on a table that this was something that the contractor should have did. No, about yeah. Paul, well, isn't this an upgrade, upgrade, upgrade from what was there already? <laughs> well, okay. yeah, let, okay. well, let, let, let Andy kind of go <coughs> yeah. yeah. ahead, Andy. Look, look, you have to remember this this project has a long history to it. Absolutely. And this, pro this project started off by, again, the Iber Paris government and Iber Paris Council going to get about a million and a half dollars to build a system for the sewer district to help with this economic development. No cost to the sewer system done, done by you. <clears throat> now, when we got into this, you have to remember that Paul Segura Parkway was not built where it was supposed to be built. And as a result, we had a lot of delays and in, in issues with it. <clears throat> we also had, this project was actually designed by the engineer for the sewer district at the time. If you remember, there was a disagreement between the uh, engineers for the sewer district. Uh, <clears throat> so there's a long history about this and what, what this really <coughs> is, is actually a piece of equipment that got water in it uh, as a result of, of, of the flood. And so you're going back in and, and working on, on that particular electric system. Uh, could some of this have been identified then, P perhaps? Some of this has also arisen in the, in the period of time it took to get it actually hooked up. If you remember, in order to service Tubiscope, for instance, right. we had to take part of it, and, and Tubiscope built a really nice building there, and this is a chance for us to go get uh, industrial customers along that road, and then this, this is what's important to get over across the, the road for, for the issues that Warren has been asking about. To, to be able to then go down 90 and service those uh, folks. So, uh, you, you know, I, I just want, if there weren't such a long history about this, that, that would be one thing. But we ran into so many difficulties in, in building this system uh, that we're <coughs> fortunate it was only <laughs> Third, I mean, I, I, I say that. But so, it, you know, this was just a, I, I think this is a method of trying to get the sewer system where they can get hooked up, start sure. having customers hook up to the system, keep the system running because we need, Business. we need sewer <laughs> running through that system uh, to, to keep it operational and then so that uh, you can open up uh, 90 for more uh, economic development. Right. But, I just wanted to remember this that kind of long history. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. I appreciate that. And I just wanted my my intention here today was to let anybody that's paying attention know what the hit. I mean, yeah, it would take two days to to tell the history of this thing, but why Paul's asking for the money and you did go through it pretty good um, while we having to come back to, to get <coughs> that. So thank you, Andy. All right. I just wanted to lay that out there. Sure. Thank you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Jen. Finish, Paul. I'm finished. James. Yeah, Paul, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the coating on the pipe is not a recoating. They were never coated to begin with Correct. from the project, right? Correct. So we're having to go back and coat it. That should have been done from the start. Right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I just think it's, uh, we shouldn't hold this project anymore, you know, and uh, for what we put into it, I think it's, you know, yeah. A fair price. It's going to be uh, something to save the piping and cost yep. us less down the road. But Correct. Unfortunately, we have to go in and do something that somebody should have done in the first place. Right. Okay. Thank you, James. Thank you.
Any other comments? There is none. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Ayes have it, so be. Motion carries. Summary number 111, introduced by the parish president. A resolution giving uh, preliminary approval to the issue of a non exit exists seven million dollar of a limited tax revenue re refunding bond of the parish of Iberia, state of Louisiana, providing certain terms in said bond of said bond, making application to the state bond commission for the approval <coughs> of said bond and, and providing for other matters in connection therewith. So move. Uh, moved by Warren, second by Lloyd. Mr. Warren. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, I just want to make it clear for the record. Th this is just the application process to go to the state bonding commission, correct? Uh, this, this is not the final approval. We don't have an interest rate of what, what we're going to look like until we go through that process and it comes back for final approval. The way I understand it, that's correct. Okay. All right. I, I just uh, want to make I, that. I do have Jason on the acres on the phone if you would like yeah, to. Uh, yes, yeah, perfect. Jason, can you give us an explanation yes. of what we're doing right now? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman and Council Members, Jason Akers with Cola Udell. Uh, sorry I can't be there in person with you, but uh, that explanation is actually <coughs> exactly correct. This is the preliminary approval that allows us to make application to the State Bond Commission and gives us the authorization uh, from you to start talking to banks to try to get you that interest rate so you can make a decision as to whether this is a path you want to uh, proceed down. And our, ex our uh, expectation is to have something back to you in September to allow us to close uh, in November, assuming, as I said, that, that you approve it going forward. Uh, Eugene, if you can, or I can. Warren, Jason, what, what would be just general off the top of your head, what, what, what terms are we looking for? 10 years? Five years. I mean, I, I know it. You know what? What's the benefactor right now? That most municipalities or parish governments are doing right now for refinancing. Uh, the refinancing market is really good um, at at the moment, and I I want to be clear on something that uh, you know, these two bond issues from 2012 and 2015 were initially financed over periods shorter than would otherwise have been allowed. Uh, so. We think that um, the, uh, the initial term of the bonds could have been longer, and we want to take advantage of that opportunity now to provide some relief to the parish. From a, uh, from a saving or from an interest rate standpoint, um, it's always hard to tell because uh, you know, every, not only do situations change between public entities, but the, uh, the interest rates are changing daily. Um, sometimes within days, uh, I can tell you that um, you know we see we see clients that are bidding out uh, ten-year bond issues for uh, un well under two percent, and we see some that are at two and a, a little bit higher. So we're hoping to have a really good rate, but the thing is that we can't get there until we get through the state bond commission to get right. their approval. And so okay. it's, you know we don't we don't know what's going to happen over the next. 60 days until we can come back to you with a final proposal. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot for the moon on this and just make this statement. This, this shouldn't hurt us in any way in case the government wants to come down and pay our debt off, right? In case, you know, Congress decides you to what, pass some kind I of relief bill if for you local government. I've got a few loans I want you to negotiate for me as well. <laughs> All right, Jason, I wanted to see if you were still selling me uh, something. I'll, I'll, I, I can tell you that, um, that uh, if that happens, and, and they're deciding they want to pay off debt, then uh, you know, you'll, is, you'll refund uh, the application really shouldn't, fee. Uh, shouldn't yeah. I'm that. good, Jason. Uh, Thank you, Jason. Yeah, that, that under two percent sounds very attractive. Uh, Brian, before I go to yeah, you, I got so Lloyd, Lloyd in the back. Go ahead, then. Jason, can you go to speaker, Lloyd? Okay. He's not gonna be able to hear you. Go to the speaker, Lloyd. He's not gonna be able to hear you. <laughs> Jason, uh, yes, sir. Uh, just submitting that uh, application. Talking to Mike Lloyd. Uh, that how much? How much would that cost us? What's the most it would cost us if we choose not to accept the application? The application actually to the state bond commission 
um, carries a hundred dollar application fee. That's the only cost that the parish would incur. And um, you know, frankly, we've, we've been down this path uh, once or twice before. Where we've made application and then not pursued it, and that's that's just a cost that we would eat on your behalf if okay. necessary. But but there is no uh, no attorney cost, no uh, advisor cost, uh, no <coughs> cost until closing. Okay, good. That's all. Thank you, Lloyd. Brian? Jason, Brian, Napier, uh, would you uh, want to tell us with two bonds for the record? This affects... Would I want to try to do what, Brian? I'm sorry. <laughs> would, you, would you, for the record, uh, tell us with two bonds that we're trying to uh, refinance? Oh, yes. It's a series 2012 bond that was for improvements to Sugarina, that, you know, what is commonly known as the Cajun Riviera now. And then the 2015 bonds were for bridge improvements uh, throughout the parish. Okay, thank you. If uh, so, when it, when it comes back, when the application comes back, that's when we're gonna make the final approval, uh, vote it up or down. If we, if we have something uh, uh, t tonight's just to give you authority to move forward, correct? That that's right. We are anticipating submitting the state bond commission application um, next week. And then uh, we would get their approval on uh, September 17th, assuming all goes well. And we'll be working in the meantime. Uh, David Medlin with Government Consultants, I believe, is on the phone as well. And he and I will be working with potential lenders to try to get you something. Our target is to have something to you for your meeting on um, uh, September 23rd so that you'll be able to make a decision then. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. Uh, I have another comment from Scott Rosanet. I just want to back on what Warren said how many options will y'all bring to the table or do you see like maybe two or three different options because sometimes even though you get a lower rate but you, you extend it too far you may cost more money in the long run that's right you heard that Jason uh, I, I did um, you know we're gonna go into this process with uh, looking at all possible options um, and our ultimate goal is to get you something that you feel comfortable with from a budgetary perspective, not just for you know, the coming years, but for the remaining term. So uh, if we start down a road that seems like it's not going to work out, we will readjust and, and go a different route. Uh, we'll do our best to, you know, certainly we'll keep um, the administration updated and we'll do our best to keep you updated throughout. Uh, when we get down to the process, we'll be introducing an ordinance uh, the week, uh, two weeks before the meeting actually uh, takes place, um, and so we will. Uh, we'll. I, I don't know if we'll have much of an idea at introduction, but we'll try to provide you a summary of what we can at that point. Usually, with these things, um, all of the all of the real uh, negotiations and the final decision terms happens over the last couple of days prior to acceptance. Good. Any other comments? Jason, thank you uh, for your input, Jason. Happy to do it. Thank you. Good. There's no other comments. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any nays? <coughs> Ayes have it, so be. Motion carries. Uh, moved by Warren to adjourn. Need a second. second. Second by Brian. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. We're adjourned.